I'm going to walk you through a few steps and um, actually the basic features on how to log on to your Seesaw account if you're logging on for the first time and um, or you're really not that familiar with it and also how to add an activity and um, how to know if you have notifications or where to go for that okay so the first thing you're going to do if you're going to log on from your from the web i just always type in seesaw up on my browser and it brings me to the login page so i normally go here to login and then from there it'll bring me here i've created a sample class just for um for this purpose so what you want to do is if you have multiple classes uh they will show up here so what you want to do is you want to click on that and i normally color code my tiles so that i know the different um it's a visual for me what class i need to go into if i want to assign certain um assignments or activities so for this purpose i'm going to click on sample class if you want to change the tile for that what you can do is you can go here on the right hand corner there is the wrench so you want to click on that and that gives you your class settings so as you could see class theme it defaults to ocean and the icon defaults to that so you can even change the icon so um just to i guess if you want to do it that way identify your classes this way say you have um an art class but then you also teach music then you can that'll work also uh, i haven't used that feature really on any of mine <clears throat> so i'm just gonna leave it with the class icon but i do change the tile color so for this purpose i'll just oh no gray's kind of dark okay so um you can also scroll down and manage your students through here so you can look up a student and since i don't have students here there's our sample student is the only one that exists home learning codes now um because we were only using seesaw at, at school in class we had our class seesaw and our home at home parent qr codes so the parent at home the family um qr codes are only for parents to view the activities that are happening in class so for example my students um once they completed a uh, an activity and they completed it correctly i would allow them to grab an ipad and upload their a photo or a video to their parents showing them what they did so the family app only is good for that if you use that app and you assign activities your students will not be able to complete the activities okay or they won't be able to upload the activities so what you have to do is go here and you have to print or download the qr codes so no this is the okay let me show you so it comes to it, this page so it'll populate the qr code for your students of course i don't have students so this is a sample of what it'll look like okay so that's one of your first steps before um you start assigning activities you need to make sure that your students have the at home the distance learning qr codes okay so once you have done that um we can scroll down and you students can see each other's work i always turn that off because i don't i, I mean i have the younger crowd of students in in elementary school so like they they do they don't write nasty things to one another but to prevent that i just um block that automatically so i always have new items require require approval for obvious reasons okay 
So enable editing. I always have that on because you want to make sure that your students um, can edit their work. So for example, if a student turns something in and it is not done properly, I'll comment or I will voice record and let them know that they need to try again one more time or I also tell them, well, you know, you you did most of it correct, but let's work on this again. So always have that on. Okay, and then this is for the sample students, so that doesn't affect your anything. Okay, so enable family access. You want to say yes because you want to have your families involved. Okay, you can also invite families. And once you add your students, it'll allow you to do that. Okay, you can manage the families. And with the families, I always have um, the pending family approvals on so that I can make sure that I approve everything. Okay. Because again, you want to just keep everybody safe and this is a healthy um, learning environment. So family likes, comments, uh, that's fine. I, I allow that um, because I go over the messages anyway. I review them. So class blog, this feature, I haven't started using it yet, but it kind of works like um, similar to just a regular blog. Students can see each other's work um, and I'm not too familiar with that yet because we haven't used that, okay? So you can go through these manage folder options and all that stuff to see how you wanna organize yourself, okay? And then here under the skill set, um, so what you wanna do is you want to I guess target specific skills, you can go into this and, and kind of, um, you know, play with those features as well. Okay, so here I showed you quickly, we changed the tile, if you want to do that, that's fine. Okay, so now we get down to actually um, assigning an assignment. So. You have several options. So if your school has purchased this, um, the school portion, then you can definitely, you have access to more, okay? So right here under assign activity, it'll take you to your activity library. Now, all these, are worksheets that I have or activities that I have uploaded for my classes they're specific to what we're learning in class okay so those um, yours will prob probably be blank if you're using this for the first time so you can find any activity and you can add it on here for your students so you're gonna want to hit create new activity and you can name it whatever you want okay and I have my caps on just okay you can voice record so if I want to voice record I hit voice record and I teach kinder so I would want to voice record so you could just say push this icon identify all the long vowel sounds or whatever if you don't like it you could delete it Okay, then you can start over with voice instruction. Okay, then if you want to add an example for them, you could add a link, a YouTube link. You can video an example. You could draw an example, photo an example, upload something else, or write notes. So this is really cool because um, you can write anything in there. Okay, so if you want to write maybe um, identifying the long A sound, okay? And then you wanna cake, okay? And then you wanna like elaborate on that, then you can do that. <clears throat> so, and then the upload, it's just another form like a PDF or anything like another kind of file or anything that you want to upload to kind of support your lesson. 
And then here is where you actually upload whatever template you want for them to complete. So for example, select for my computer and I'm just gonna select whichever one. This one is the one we're currently working on in class. So they can um, use any of these features down here. Okay, so they can write using, right now I guess they're using the marker type or pen type and then or they can also do oh and it won't let me do it okay that's fine but they can also use a text box oh there it goes okay so um my students some of them love to use the text box some of them are uh, not not so much but they can and then so that's there so there you go, you can add, a, they can add as many to do anything that they want, okay? With that, um, so this is just to show you what they're gonna, what features they can use, okay? And they can highlight, they can, everything, they can choose the color, they can pencil it in. And then, so once you're done with the activity and you can add more pages here on the right hand side if you want to add another page to go to that that's perfectly fine okay and i'm gonna delete this just okay and then you want to hit the check mark here to ensure that it saves okay so now it's uploaded you can see the attachment here And there you go. So what you're gonna have to do from here is you go back to your activity library. You can assign the activity and actually you can assign it to any of your classes. So I'm gonna assign it to my sample student in this class. You can assign now or you can schedule. Now with distance learning, of course now, um, we have to be mindful of when we assign assignments and how many and all that. So what I do when I'm planning is I actually um, have all of my activities lined up and I upload them for the week just to get a visual of how many activities I'm asking my students to do for kinder. You, I, I don't want to overdo it. You also have parents that are still working that are they're extremely frustrated concerned um i always try to take into consideration what you know that not everybody in this situation is um has the privilege that you know that, like that some of my parents have or that i have that we're st at working from home but we're at home so parents not all parents are are not working so um I schedule all my activities so that I can remind myself and keep a visual. So you can select the date here. Okay, and if this one is for Friday, and then you can select the times here. You want it to go out. I normally have mine go out at seven. Okay, at seven. And you can also type it in if you want. Okay, and then AM or PM. So then you hit the check mark and assign on April 24th, 2020. And there you go. And you're gonna, it's asking you where the students are gonna view it. And yes, you want it in this class because it's my sample class. Okay, so this, this is how your landing page will look when you've assigned activities. All the activities that you've assigned will be here. Okay. And when you log in and um, again, after the assignment has been assigned and students start to complete it, you want to look here on the upper left side because where my name is, is where you will have your notifications. So if you click on that, it'll take you to here. So it'll 
basically give you the options. Okay, where do you want to look your notifications up at? Reading class, KA class, or sample class. So I'm going to choose sample class, and then it'll take you directly to them. If they're not he posted here, then you can go here to inbox. And then notifications. And then that's where it'll give you everything that all your notifications will be lined up here. Okay. So let me just show you very quickly how it will look like. Mm, I don't think that one's going to have anything. Let me see. So right here under inbox, notifications, and then there's all of my, no, some of my notifications that my um, students have, or that Seesaw sent me that my students have completed activities, okay? In the inbox, this is where you'll receive private messages from students or family Okay, any student announcements or anything like that, you can also create them here. So it's really cool because um, it, it works. Some of us use Class Dojo, and um, but I started kind of playing with this, and I, I kind of like this. So I don't know, I may try using this as communication with my parents next year. So send student announcements. And you can select all the student, all your students if you're sending a um, class announcement. So I haven't played with it as much but um, as I'd like to, but I'm, I have kind of seen some tutorials and stuff on it. So I'm going to play with it and see how it goes. But um, I really like having everything in one centralized area, so I might use this. Um, the app Seesaw to communicate and maybe try to replace it with Class Dojo next year because my students already know how to upload their own stuff on Seesaw. It would be awesome for my parents to also get their messages from me here. You can do that too under Family Announcement. Okay, and you can do um, what well, you need to invite the families first, but you can message individually and as a group so it's it has the dojo feature kind of added in here and it's kind of like just like a one-stop shop for everything okay so that's these are the basics um another thing to look at is the journal okay so you can look student by student at their journal so this is what I'm doing when I am seeing if students have completed work, okay? So I'm looking in here, see how many students have completed what, and then um, that's how I'm keeping track and giving credit to students who have completed work. And that's it. If you have any questions, anything else, um, let me know, comment in the comments below. Don't first forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos, especially if you're, um, remote teaching and it's new to you, um, make sure to subscribe to my channel.